Hi, where are you from? In suburban Chicago. What's your name? Be ever impressive. Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric C here. Welcome to The Utter Noise. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. I gotta say, I, I love this rotary sander. I picked up over at uh, Menards and for what it is and how it works, uh, this was a great buy. It's got adjustable speeds on there. You can go from zero to, or one to six, and then after six is a locked speed. Uh, where it's high speed and I gotta say I've got DA's in the garage that work with the air compressor and this thing actually works really good. The only thing is I don't think I can use this sander with water. The dust collector on it works pretty good but not like super great. Probably if you connect a vacuum to it it'll be a lot better as far as collecting most of the dust. Otherwise it does make a little bit of a mess. So right now I'm just getting ready to put the final coat of epoxy resin on this thing. And it, with this sander, as long as you don't dig in or apply too much pressure on one side of it and you just lay it flat, uh, you'll get a real nice flat, like dead flat, uh, top on whatever you're trying to sand for your surface. So right now I'm just cleaning up my mess, getting things ready to do another pour. and. Uh, yeah, so it's got to be fun. I'm really happy with the way this is turning out. I've kind of pushed my limits as far as, well, I still haven't found my limit yet, what I can and can't do with these guitars. And I'm thinking about doing uh, another one, possibly like this one, maybe, but in maybe a different color. Uh, just kind of test out things. I've got enough, I got enough veneer to do, you know, I don't know how many guitar tops. But I'm going to try getting out of the veneer. I still want to find a regular planer, a 13 inch planer. And uh, I have found a few of them, but they're like 700 bucks and stuff. So I'm still kind of waiting to see what I can find out there. Thought about picking up a used one, but you know, used ones, you don't know what you're actually getting, especially if you're not there to look at it. Like if you bought, purchased it off of eBay or something. But I'm going to see what Harbor Freight to see what they got. Maybe they got something decent. So right now I'm going to end up fixing a spot that the router kind of uh, screwed up on me. When I was going around the body with the router, I ended up gouging a little bit. The bearing followed the side of the body of the guitar and ended up um, falling into the hole for the output jack. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm basically making a wall I'm going to apply the epoxy resin to it, fill up that little indentation that it, the router created, and build that up to where it's going to be um, not seen anymore. You shouldn't feel it at all, but you kind of might see it. It kind of the epoxy may play with your eyes a little bit as far as how that looks. So right now I'm going to be mixing up the epoxy resins, and what I end up doing is it's a half and half mix, uh, one part by one part. And what I've got to do is mix it. It says for like eight minutes. I kind of go 10 minutes with it. So I'm just going to be mixing away. Fast forward as part of the video until I do the pour. Uh, the pour of this thing really, uh, it, it comes out really nice when I end up doing the pour. It seems like that every time I end up using the epoxy resins and uh it's like a learning experience of how to lay it out. I don't do it the same way all the time. Every time when I do a pour, it, it's different from the last time. I may start with the edges first, uh, depending on how I'm co covering the edges. If it's a masked edge, uh, I may start in the center. So this one here is a masked edge because I really don't have to do anything to the sides of the back. They're pretty mint. But as you can see here, how it just lays out, it just comes out like glass. Hitting it with the torch to remove any bubbles, and then after a little bit, I'll hit it again. So, someone I know on eBay, on, or on YouTube, was asking about my eBay account. So this is my eBay account, as far as what I've got going on here. And these are all of the reviews or feedback that I end up getting for all the guitars that I sold. Now this is not including what I've sold to my music store or have given away. Um, 
including the uh, years ago I gave a couple of guitars to my uh, my old high school, donated a couple of them to them. Um, so yeah, this is just a little bit of what I've been doing with my eBay store or whatever you want to call it. I do more buying than selling on eBay. I just kind of started doing it like a few years back. So yeah, this is kind of cool. Nice to see the feedback. So this is what everything looks like now with uh, the epoxy resins. All right, so I've got all the tape, or almost all the tape, removed off the edges. I have a little bit of a tape line that I have to take care of. Not a big deal. The back on this thing is mint. The sides on this thing are mint. I am going to do a, a little bit of a buffing job on the body itself once it's done, but there is, like, no dirt, dust, anything in this top. Otherwise, you'd see either bubbles or pinholes or, or whatever. Uh, oh, this thing came out really, really nice. This is the control or the uh, neck area here. It's it's hard as a rock. The only thing I got to do is I got to work on this edge over here a little bit when uh, I start doing some sanding to it because when I do this, get rid of the edge around there from the tape line. But I got to do some work over here. And you see, I got a wall built up right there, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of sanding and some polishing there. So right now, what I want to do is I have a three eighths top bearing bit for the router but I have to drill a pilot hole for that bearing bit to fit into and all the uh, cavities including this area over here where the neck gets mounted so I have some place to put the bearing into and then run it around to cut out all these extra pieces that I need to remove. Now one thing with this guitar that I wanted to do is I thought about putting some type of a uh, embedding in the epoxy some type of like a spider or something it's like you know I, I I'm not going to do that so what I ended up doing is I picked up the spider decals anyways and I got a couple of them here that I picked up and when I sell the, this guitar on eBay it'll be you know this will be included with the guitar itself if you want to put it on there that's up to you I kind of like it as it is but that's what I bought this guitar for was to flip it and to flip it as a custom. So the headstock right now has a um, another layer of epoxy resin the same way I did this one to where um, when I put the de decal on there for the headstock logo and stuff, I'm hoping that it, it's enough epoxy to give a shadowing effect under the epoxy. So anything that's on top of here will kind of have like a, a, a shadow underneath it, kind of make it look like that the logo is suspended. That's the one thing I like about the epoxy resin. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to start drilling some pilot holes over here and get this started to where I can start to cut out these chambers. Now I do have a dot here and a dot here which mark I did it with black magic marker, which mark where the locations of the uh, bridge is going to be. And um, the inside of the control cavity, I'll end up drilling out my holes for the controls. They're already pre-drilled through the body. The uh, veneer is kind of covering up, so I know exactly where they're going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and find a spot, not close to the edges. I start drilling, going slow, and not applying a lot of pressure because I don't want this to pull anything with the top. There you go. Now there shouldn't be any epoxy resin inside here, but there is a foam pad inside of here. And what that foam pad is doing is when I ended up uh, putting the veneer on the first time, the suction from the bag that I put this in the vacuum bag kind of pulled in a lot of these areas here, uh, pulling the veneer into it. So when I put the foam rubber inside of here, that kept the veneer upward so when I did the vacuum bag it didn't get sucked down and kind of stretch out all the, the sides over here where the veneer is messing up, you know, messing up the way that it looks over here. This area here in the center, I know some of you guys said that you like the way that looked. Um, that's actually CA glue. 
because all the edges didn't quite match up very well so what I ended up doing is using the thick set CA glue along with the activator and filling in anything that I saw here that was open so there would be no epoxy going into the cavity over here. So let me go ahead and do this one up too. Can I do it probably in the same, around the same place maybe. pliers we'll probably pull out some of that foam see there's a little bit of foam rubber inside there just enough to add pressure so it didn't pull in when I put this on the vacuum Let's put this area over here Those holes are drilled out and taken care of. I love the way the veneer looks, uh, not even colored or anything. I don't know if you see that or not, but when you do the epoxy resin just over the veneer, uh, without adding any dyes to the veneer itself, it really comes out really nice. So this one here, I had the... Um, foam rubber inside there but I ended up pulling it out after the epoxy before I ended up doing the epoxies so right now I'm going to see is my bit going to fit inside there yeah my bit's going to fit inside there no problem all right so that's going to work out good I'm not going to do any veneering or um, routing out today because I do want to give this the full uh, three or four days that it's supposed to have. I mean, it's it's hard. And from what I checked on the uh, wax paper itself, I couldn't put an indentation with my fingernail in there. So I know that it is pretty much cured up pretty good, but I want to make sure that it is cured up pretty much 100%. It says to give it, uh, I guess, like four or five days, three days, something like that, that... Uh, but after like a day or so, you can actually handle it. As long as you don't gouge or, or do anything to gouge it out. So yeah, this is this is coming along really, really nice. I gotta say, this is really where's my gear can at? Get the dust off of here already. So the headstock, I'm still waiting, which will probably be Monday for the decal to come, the headstock logo to come in. I can't wait to put that on, finish up the headstock. I checked all the frets on there. I checked uh, the fret ends. Everything with the neck on this guitar is actually really, really good. Surprisingly, uh, from what I understand, this was just an open box that somebody bought and really didn't use or play the guitar. Uh, that's the bad thing about you know getting involved in something that you end up losing interest with very quickly it ends up sitting around trust me I've got a shitload of them on the other side of the wall over here that are just sitting around that uh, really I should be playing but for right now um, that's it I want to let this sit for a couple more days and start doing the routing that'll be another video to basically finish up the body and to finish up the headstock so pretty cool. Thanks for watching guys and uh, you guys take it easy.